met the machine at all. Or the creature in the water volcano who wrote it onto the world, but Ziat was a wicked creature, not worthy of her apprenticeship to the council. For Ziat could not resist swimming in the rain, which no respectable member of her pod would do. All the other apprentices always stayed under the sea in the methane rain because the council master said they should, but Ziat could not resist. Curiosity made her long body wobble. It was science after all. It wasn't that nothing could be learned in the light of the rings of the planet when the sky was clear, but she wanted to know what happened when the gold clouds grew heavy. Ziat could not fight the longing to feel the rain fall on her fins while she floated under the thick orange clouds, stretching out her unfurled wings in the flat black meth sea. And therefore, Ziat was the only apprentice who saw the machine fall through the clouds into the volcano. The ground shuddered. Then minutes later, it rolled down the hill, cutting slashes of molten hydrogen dioxide all the way down the slopes. The machine was clearly not of the world. It had bright lights that stung Ziat's eyes brighter than that planet and all its rings and all its other worlds and the stars beyond. Its metal skin was so hot, it left a trail of molten ground as it rolled along the shore of the Black Sea. It stopped when it saw Ziat peering its glass eye at her head. Ziat climbed out of the sea onto the ice and crawled as close to it as she dared. The machine shut down its searing lights and made sounds. Its single eye fixated on Ziat. The sounds were like music. It lifted a metal arm and pointed at the volcano and made the sounds again. Then the rain stopped and Ziat knew that she better get underground before she was caught. The machine seemed to have the same idea because it rolled away toward the hills as if it were afraid. Its tracks were ugly, slick, and dangerously warm. It was a gash in the world. For a moment, Ziat hesitated, wondering if she should follow the melted tracks at her feet. But in the end, Ziat scurried down into the tunnels and returned to her studies. It was best to say nothing. Captain Anu Karamchandani opened her eyes, heard the hissing, and then closed them again. Move, she urged herself. The hissing was almost certainly oxygen leaking out of the ship. It took her a long, dizzy moment to consider that sounds meant there, were, uh, there was atmosphere, and atmosphere meant she was on Titan's surface. She put a hand down on the floor. Yes, it was still and cold. She was on the surface and breathing ethane, not good. She sat up and reached out for her helmet. It was still intact. The seal only separated in the fall. She ripped a bit of duct tape, fumbled a bit while she wrapped the tape around her neck. The roll of tape clunked as it fell to the floor. She picked it up and dropped it again. Gravity, more than Mars, probably less than Earth, but so much more than she was used to even in the wheel section of Maya, her home station near Europa. It wasn't bad. She'd hit the water pocket in the center of the crater, so it was a balmy three degrees. There was even a little oxygen in the air around here, so she'd landed right where they were planned all those many months ago when they mapped out her mission. Rocket man, she said, too quiet. Rocket Man was voice activated and didn't hear it. She twisted the volume control outside the suit. Rocket Man, activate! Her mechanical arms and legs rolled up, but not from the direction she expected. While she had been knocked out, Rocket Man folded into rover mode. She slipped into her arms, pulled her upper body onto her legs, connected to her prosthetics data port, and nearly passed out again. She lay with her eyes closed as the images flicked into her mind. Rocket Man had gone all the way down to Kraken Mare and back again. It showed her the rubble and the rocks made of water ice and sloped down to the sea of liquid methane, and then it showed her the alien. The creature was as tall as Anu was wearing, was wearing the exoskeleton, but wobbly, like an elongated ball of rubber, but with fins and a large eye that seemed moist. It couldn't have a wet eye in these temperatures. Water ice made up half the surface of Titan, but it was a creature whose blood and sweat and tears had to be composed of liquid methane, like the rain that fell all over the lakes that she, thankfully, did not land in. Well, Rocket Man, she said, I see you made a friend. <laughs>